headed out to the Alora Gorge for some fishing this weekend, you may find something at the end of your line that you don't recognize. Round goby, an invasive species of fish, have made their way inland and their conservation authority is asking for help from anglers to keep them from spreading. City Beach Janella Massa is at the Alora Gorge. Jan Janella, what have you learned? Mark, uh, round goby aren't new to Canada, but they've been in the Great Lakes since the 90s. But this is the first time that they've been found here. Anthony Moore has caught round goby before in Lake Ontario. I have no idea, really. I don't really know much about the fish. I just know they're not native to our waters and they just cause troubles. He's never seen one at the Allure Gorge until today. That's a goby. To his surprise, Moore pulled one out of the river just five minutes after sinking his bait. I don't want to put it back in the water, right, because they're not from here. And he's got the right idea. The bottom dweller is native to the seas of Eastern Europe. They are also, they'll outcompete other bottom dwelling fish um, for food and for resources, and they'll actually eat the young, um, the young eggs. Our learning goal today is to learn about invasive species and their detrimental or negative effect on our ecosystems. We just learned from CTV, that little CTV article on the goby. The goby is located right here. Now this fish eats a lot of eggs and it really harms our natural ecosystem and out competes a lot of fish. We also are gonna talk a bit about the Asian carp. Now the Asian carp is not quite in our ecosystem yet in the Great Lakes ecosystem anyways, but it's getting close to it. And if it gets in there, there's a big concern that it's gonna do huge negative damage to our uh, native fisheries. And if you didn't know, Kingsville is actually one of the largest freshwater fisheries in the world. And there's a lot of money invested in that. And if the, there is a fear that if the Asian carp get into our ecosystem, that that fishery potentially could collapse or be destroyed. To understand invasive species, we really need to understand native species. Above me is the word Phragmites. Uh, directly in this direction here, you can see over the right there, you have a Phragmites picture. Now, if you've seen this before, this is in Essex County all over the place, and it's out competing native plants. So native plants, we're going to learn, are plants that have existed in our area for a really, really long time, whereas Phragmites is invasive, meaning that it's actually not from this area, but is actually doing a better job surviving in this area, and is out competing the native species there. So we'll talk about why it matters. To understand why it matters, we have to understand the idea of ecological niche. To understand the importance of natives and versus invasive species, we have to understand this idea of ecological niche again. Look above me, you can see these birds and they are each eating from a different area of the habitat. That is their niche. Now, what would happen if an animal was going to start to outcompete for that specific niche. What would happen to that animal? Well, there's a good chance that that animal would become endangered or extinct. So the organism has a unique place in the food web, its habitat, breeding area, and the time of day that it's most active. These are all things that are its ecological niche. And if another animal takes over that, there's a chance that it might become endangered or extinct, like I said. Each species tends to have a different niche, a different role to play. This helps reduce competition between species for the same territory and resources. Everybody finds their own spot in the ecosystem to survive. So what's the importance of native species? What's the big deal about native species? Why can't we just replace them with these invasive species? Well, it's important to remember that every single organism has a very specific role to play. And native species are actually a vital part of the food web. If you remove one, you can really collapse a whole food web. And the reason is, is that plants and animals that are native to an area are really adapted over millions, if not billions of years to, re to react to one another. For example, if an animal eats a plant, that plant is adapted so it can successfully defend itself enough to be able to reproduce and produce more plants. When you introduce a brand new animal or other types of plants that are invasive, they're not adapted to each other and it can cause a really big imbalance in the ecosystem. Word that we Invasive species are defined or considered to be alien or non-native to an ecosystem. But the key thing that we need to understand about invasive species is that they cause environmental harm or harm to human health. And that's a little bit different than when we talk about 
uh, non-native species. Non-native species are a new species that enter an ecosystem. They're not native. They haven't evolved to live there in balance with the other animals and organisms, but uh, they can cause a disturbance when it, they become competitive for a niche with a species already in the ecosystem. But generally, we don't we say invasive ones cause harm. And when we think about uh, non-native species, we're going to say that they are not necessarily causing harm yet. Invasive species can ca cause harm in three different ways. One, economic harm. This could be, for example, this could be a type of um, mold or bacteria that is foreign to an area and it destroys certain crops. Uh, and that would be a form of economic harm caused by invasive species. Environmental harm, which could be you're simply displacing a natural uh, organism that exists in that ecosystem. Or three, you could harm the human health. Now, this could also be a result of African bees would be an example of this. There was a big concern as African bees and invasive species of bees moved north into uh, America from Mexico and there was a concern for human health because they can potentially kill when they sting. This is an example of that. If you look below me, you can see Phragmites again invading a wetland. This is an invasive species and it's causing huge issues to our, uh, in our ecosystem and is causing a lot of environmental harm and potentially economic harm eventually because it is so, it spreads so rapidly and it's so difficult to get rid of and it really outcompetes all other types of native species in the area. Now, there is over 50,000 species that have been introduced to the U.S. in the past 500 years. Now, not all are invasive. Um, out of the 4,200 weed species, though, 630 of them cause excessive harm. So you get the right type of species in the area, and it can cause real harm. Now, not all of them, some of these non-native species actually won't cause damage, but some of these invasive ones that really outcompete the natural animals are really harmful. So uh, the ecological effects of invasive species. Well, one thing that can happen is, is that they outcompete native and endangered species and cause them to become extinct. Another danger is, is that they can cause less survival of native species by outcompeting them. They can cause lower diversity of native species. And they can reduce hunting and fishing potential. For example, the Asian carp, there's a big concern for that. And the habitat aesthetics is diminished. For example, if we look at the marshes in Point Pelee today, they're a lot less aesthetically. They don't look as nice because it's all fragmites now. That's it for today's lesson. We'll talk about this more tomorrow. Thank you. There are growing concerns today over an invasive species in Lake Ontario. This after three more Asian carp were captured in the waters around the Toronto Islands. It is prompting conservation officials to take action. CTV's Natalie Johnson's on the story for us. And Natalie, we all know once these fish take hold, they take over territory pretty quickly. So what can conservation officials do? What, what, what do they do? Well, essentially right now, Ken, they're just monitoring the situation, waiting for lab test results to come back so they have a little bit more information about what it is that they're dealing with. This particular species isn't native to Ontario, and so they could potentially wreak havoc on our ecosystems here. Officials don't really want to speculate too much on that at this point, but they are monitoring the situation very carefully. For the second time this summer, invasive Asian grass carp have been found in the Toronto Harbour. Three more of the fish, including one female, a destructive species with no natural predators in this region, which experts say is a concern. Well, grass carp, their feeding strategy is to feed on uh, aquatic vegetation. So they eat so much aquatic vegetation that they actually destroy the native vegetation or the native habitat for native species. Toronto and region conservation officials found the fish while out monitoring, and they've now sent them to a lab in Burlington for analysis.